Hey, good evening, guys. Ken of Tortoise Capital Nightly Strategy Podcast for October 17th, uh, 2022. So we'll start with the uh, tactical screen, the 30-minute look back for SPY. And here's our uh, one-day look back. Here's the close. Um, here's our five-day look back to here. And then a 10-day look back to here. So that gives us our 10-day low, our 10-day high. Um, I'm noticing key support levels here at the base of the PSARs. So today we had a gap up from Friday's sharp sell-off. So we had two days of extraordinary volatility. I mean, we had... Uh, we had a close here um, on Wednesday, a big gap down, and then a amazing move to the very top of the day, uh, almost a gap trap where uh, then Friday was a very weak close, harsh sell-off, uh, which then set up another big gap. So these gaps are typical of... Uh, exaggerated volatility and bare volatile markets that are trapping the end of day traders and it's really favoring the futures traders who can trade after the market is closed and before the market opens so you can start seeing uh, they're actually making money in those in those little windows uh, and then what we had today was a sharp gap up a strong early move up and then kind of leveling off and closing well at 362, right at the crucial price level um, that last week failed. But today there was no evidence of a sell-off. So if we see an upside here, um, we would mark this as the 10-day high or the five-day high. And any breakout from here would be very interesting uh, because that's gonna that has to close this gap right here. So where we are um, is like no resistance overhead until you see this uh, seven or eight days ago, which is the top of the dragon, the top of the RL10. So this is the normal congestion zone in here that you would expect to start seeing some resistance. So if if we can get an open tomorrow that takes it through the high of today, then there's really a chance for a quick run up into the beginning of the resistance somewhere around 374 375 so let's be ready for a quick hit uh, tomorrow in that region uh, I would also not be surprised to see it come up here hit and then start to fail in which case you would want to preserve that move and not let it come all the way back to here so there's a this is a very tactical space uh, tactical trade in here between about um, let's call it 368 and 374 that's about a six dollar move and so if our RL10 intraday is about a buck and a quarter that gives us about a four to one reward to risk to the upside if we if we're able to tap into that energy by the same token failure below 365 in the PSAR uh, predicts that we close this gap pretty fast in a bare volatile market and this thing gets down to below 360 and 358 which is where the support is now if this support level breaks if we just call that the support so like below say 358 then the next level of support is down here at 353. So that fails quickly. And then if this fails, look out below. So what we have is a, uh, a, a price ladder that's going to support strong moves in either direction once it gets out of this little wedge right here. Uh, strong moves in either direction are possible. This is, by definition, a compound critical state, which is what we want. And we are in a bare, volatile market, which favors 
extraordinary moves to the upside or downside. The least expected move would be something that just drifts sideways. So we will get paid to play the breakouts from this from this region. Even if it's a fake one and go two or fake one and go two, you want to stay with it and uh, bet on volatility. Shifting to the daily charts and a 30-day look back. So again, this is our this was our move today. A gap up from from Friday's close. That was your gap up, and then it generally closed well at 366. So here's our five-day bracket. Here's our 10-day range. You know, 20-day and 30-day. There's our 30-day high, our 30-day low, and you can see that we still have we're we're in the bottom third of that 30-day range. So this is still in the value proposition that if this belly of the RL10 holds at about 358, if that holds, then this turning point really is a turning point. Now we've had one uh, reasonable move off the bottom. That two-day period was the best two-day period in the last two and a half years. So it's not impossible to see that same move to get it up to 380. Now, if it gets past 380, then what that tells you is that the buyers coming in here are stronger than the buyers here because those guys faded pretty fast. So if this can get to 380 and break through, then that's a very strong sign that maybe we can get to the next price level, which is through 400 and up to about 405. So there's really two legs. There's really two legs in play here. Um, one of them is to about here, and one is to about here. So two legs, uh, if we're able to break above 370. So that's the tactical trade starting to unfold. And then if we can get above the 30-day high at 410, then really, um, in retrospect, this would be seen as a double bottom and all as well. But uh, there's work to be done. And then on the downside, uh, it's a no-brainer to get short in a bear volatile market on a collapse of a double bottom because that would be decisive. And lest we forget, the 150-day look back uh, reminds us, you know, here's, here's our 30-day uh, look back, 60, 90, 120, 150. You can see that we've had this horrible sell-off to the 150-day low. We've had a slight bounce out of it here with this five-day move. So we're this far off of that 150-day low, but that's like in the bottom 20% uh, uh, of the 150-day range, the bottom 30% of the 30-day range. So this is Godzilla territory all over the place. Uh, horrible on all three look-back periods and expanded five-day and one-day volatility. This predicts a large move in either direction. And as we just showed on the tactical charts, follow the price. Hold your nose, follow the price, make sure your chin strap is fastened. All right, so let's take a look at a sniper trade of the day. Uh, we briefed this one real time during the VTI podcast that we, we did. Uh, the recording of that hour-long session, which summarizes the Creativity 202 course and key elements of the foundations and sniper trades. Uh, it was a pretty good hour of work, and I uh, would in invite you to listen in. Uh, so this is, uh, this is the two-minute chart, because uh, for some reason Yahoo won't give you three minutes. So I picked the two and uh, took the breakout from the two-minute. Here's our standard risk box, which is a buck and a quarter in uh, SPY, that's the R10. So the range stat on that is $12.50. So we're not allowed to be surprised if this were to move 
from 364 where it opened at the low of the day plus 1250 which would take us to uh, 376.5 is the maximum intraday move to the upside by the same token uh, if it w went from the high of the day down, you would just subtract 12, 1250 from 365 and get 353, 352.5. So that's the size of the magnitude. Actually, that's the size of the move, the magnitude of the move. Uh, so uh, OR2 played the breakout, standard risk box. Uh, my job is to get my risk from here to no lose plus dinner for two so that if price starts moving this way, as soon as I can get into here and lock in that little wedge, that's about a 0.25 or a 0.3 gain, then I have taken all of my risk out and I've uh, I've created a no lose plus dinner for two, which is a science project, which is a disinterested state of mind that is concerned only about managing the experiment properly, recording the results, and then using those results in a systematic analysis to determine what we think about our rules. The uh, podcast from today was noteworthy for the answer that I gave about the 2R battle drill to someone who asked me what I thought about a break-even stop after what would I think about a trade that got to 2R that had a standard risk? What would I think about a trade that went all the way back to minus 1R? I would say what in the world are you thinking? If you know where your average win is, say 1R or 0.6R, you cannot let a 2R win go below your average win. And you can't let an above average win become a below average win or worse, lose money or worst of all, lose all of the capital that you put at risk when you were holding a 2R win. Under no circumstances can you do that and survive. So the, uh, the answer to that question was pretty good. So this trade moves out. Uh, I take just a money management risk or money management exit right here. Um, maximum favorable excursion is probably about 2R because that's 1R, and so it rolls over, and I just take it here, and cash 1. Easiest decision known to man. I then play a Kata 2 re-entry, because there was such a large upward gap. You know, the previous close was down here. This was all upward gap. So I'm only interested in the long side until proven otherwise. And what I see is uh, a low, a higher low in the dragon than a crossing of the dragon while the PSAR is rolling up. So I just take that routinely I establish my standard risk box, but I'm prepared to exit right here uh, at the PSAR because if it moves that far against me, then I have evidence that it's failing. It couldn't hold the statistical support level of the dragon, and I'm ready to get short because the target back to the low of the day would give me almost 2R. And then if the gap fails, that thing's going to give me 5R potential in a bare volatile, uh, in a bare volatile market. 
So I'm not going to stick around, but I'm willing to participate. And now my job is to figure out how soon I can get my stop above my entry so that I can lock in this little wedge of gains just like we did over here and turn that into no lose plus dinner for two. Lather, rinse, and repeat. Boring. Just the way we like it. So this one rolled over. Uh, I take a one, two, three exit just like we did before. It was supposed to go. It didn't go. That's enough for me to get out at the edge of the dragon and I'll capture, you know, a 0.5. So if this one's one and that one's 0.5, we're about plus 1.5 for the day. Routine work. can't even get through the piece art. Now, my long side orientation on this um, causes me to not take this trade. If you put the standard risk box on it, that one probably pays off with an exit probably in here or certainly here. But my trading plan precluded that, so I just don't take it. Just notice it and file it. Uh, I do get uh, this one. I still feel this is in play. This is like, this is a, uh, has a more of a SSC because of a big sell-off, find support, PSAR flip, standard risk. And by this time, I'm already ready to move my stop to about here. Not afraid of doing that. And lock in that little wedge. Now I've taken all my risk out of there and I can be disinterested on this. This is a sort of a standard psychological ploy to quiet my inner chimp. I, I get lucky once again. Uh, the more prepared I am, the luckier I get. So I've stopped apologizing for that. Let other people worry about that. Uh, so now I'm decided this is when the uh, podcast started. And so I just said, you know what? Uh, I'm pretty happy with the PSR stop right there. Bottom of the dragon and the PSR. And I can lock in this move. Because uh, that's about a 0.5. So between that 0.5, this 0.5, and that one, we're about plus two. And um, pretty good to go. So that's the sniper trade of the day in SPY. Capitalizing on the big gap up. Sector performances today. Should have had that before, sorry. Uh, we actually had a really significant divergence between the equities and the bonds today. So the S&P cruising along at 2.57. What was better? Emerging markets, 2.75. That's a hopeful sign. Uh, the Russell, 3.2. That's even better because that's your speculative U.S. Large, uh, small caps. And then tech coming in at 3.3. That's all good. And the Dow was pretty good at 1.77, but this was clearly a vote to the upside for growth. Hope, growth, and opportunity. Plus one if you remember who the whose presidential slogan that was. Plus one if you know that that was Steve Forbes. Hope, growth, and opportunity. Uh, only treasuries were negative for today, minus 0.5. They're well under that key resistance level of 100. Here was the cut line between gains and losses. Just about everything worked today. Uh, so we'll just start. What was underperforming uh, for the sectors? Well, uh, energy, uh, staples, 
were 1.25 and 1% respectively. Uh, Aussie dollar and uh, agriculture was flat, still above the key price level of 20. Um, but when your two underperforming sectors um, are still more than 1% good, that's pretty good. Um, other unperforming sectors, uh, finance, materials, oil exploration, Mexico, Brazil, that's all between 2.5 and 2.1. You get uh, Bitcoin, wheat, and precious metals at 2.1%. Uh, 2 Individual companies that uh, underperformed. Uh, certainly the, uh, the VIX was horrible at 2.8. Um, oil and blended commodities in the bread for 0 0.06 and 0.24. But uh, here's our semiconductors. Disappointing. Intel and Texas Instruments. And looking for NVIDIA. Oh, NVIDIA must have done pretty good. So the semis underperformed. Wheat and precious metals underperformed. Um, so that means we had a lot that did well today. And we're going to see these as the mostly the growth stories and the um, market leaders, the disruptors, did well today. This is the triumph of hope over experience. Um, so SPY is our baseline. So going working our way up the scale, we have clean energy at 2.9, Ethereum 3%, uh, S&P Tech at 3.05, the two lumbers, cut and wood at 3.1 respectively, uh, Lithium, Simon Property Group, real estate, uh, that's residential real estate with a nice dividend, and then biotech, up between 3.3 and 3.7, and you get into consumer discretionary, 4%, which was benefiting from Tesla's 7%. Uh, Arc Genomics, the fangs, uranium, up to 5%, between 4.7 and 5. Uh, marijuana, 5 and a quarter. Uh, ARC Innovation, 7%. It's still down 71% from its peak, so, you know, but uh, that's definitely in play. Uh, now, individual companies that did well, uh, Coinbase and Squarespace, 8.5%. Rivian, 6.9%. NVIDIA, 6%. Tesla, 7%. PayPal five and a quarter. So you had, you had the financial disruptors, Coinbase, Squarespace, PayPal, uh, Robinhood, three and a quarter. So those financial disruptors all did very well today. Uh, here's U.S. Steel, four and a quarter. Microsoft, three point nine. Uh, pretty good work. Uh, Cliff Natural Resources, 3%. So there's Cliff and U.S. Steel in our metals. And Alcoa was above the S&P at 2.69. So all the metals did well today. Uh, I'd be looking at uh, U.S. Steel for some more follow-through tomorrow. The biggest name in that area. Uh, so lots to choose from tomorrow. All right. Let's take a look at. Uh, let's take a look at how the people traded today. Uh, here's Constantine with the euro dollar pair. Um, gets a PSAR flip. Well, let me put that in blue so you can see it. Sorry. He gets the uh, PSAR flip 
after it holds for quite a while. PCR flip, he gets the he gets the break out here, standard wrist box. Uh, he just rides the rails, and after the peak, captures the one two three exit. So if that's one unit of reward, or one unit of risk, I should say, that's one, two, three. That's about plus four in the euro dollar mix. That's nice work. Right by the numbers. That's on the three minute chart. This is the Aussie. So a long sideways quiet channel. He uses that as the size of his MMRB. Uh, sees the PSAR flip, takes the continuation breakout. This little shelf, there was a possibility here that if you take the the standard 2R battle drill, um, my brother's been coaching folks to look seriously at another entry, like automagically, like right about there. Uh, and you can see that in this case it would have paid off nicely. Um, this is a nice exit right here at the, at, at the southern skin of the dragon. Uh, he gave it, you know, he gave it that after this first sell off. He gave it a chance to make a new high. It couldn't break above that high, so you can already see the step function coming down. That little cascade. Uh, then when it holds, and then breaks above uh, the dragon here, that was a possibility. Uh, he had some other things going on, but that's certainly a tradable play on the regression line crossing the dragon. There's your PSAR flip standard entry. So either one of those is a playable entry. When you get a move like this that can't make a new high and starts to roll over, when I see that nice big bar like this, I like to just cut it in half, and I would just try and take it there and make make my trade that, that little move right there. Uh, but that's a nice piece of work for another 3.6. Uh, the uh, the Dax 30, um, he tries a PSAR flip breakout. It doesn't really, uh, doesn't really work. Um, the uptrend is grinding. Um, he looks at this. It was an uptrend day, so he decides not to take the short. Good call. Now he gets the next little support level at rolls out standard risk on the PSAR flip, brings in one, two, three, um, then plays the rollover in the exit. Uh, pretty nice work for another 2.5. Uh, Tim, working on, um, let's see what we got here. Whoops. Uh, sees these support levels continuing to march. He starts trading here. Uh, sees that as a little shelf. It breaks out. He puts a standard risk box in. But he's already kind of committed to not letting it break below the PSR. So he's never going to take a full one-hour loss because he's geared his stop loss to be right there. He starts locking it in within two bars and then starts working it all the way up. Um, this is a one, two, it never hit the three, it rolled up. As soon as this starts rolling over again the second time where it makes lower highs, uh, I think you're, you're justified in thinking here that it had a chance to go, but it did not. It could not make a higher low. And you get the crossover. I'd like to take that halfway up this big bar and I'd like to take it here or at the edge of the dragon, but this is still fine. 
and you lock in an above average win. Uh, he sees the support level. But we can actually take the RLXD here. He plays the PSAR flip. Uh, has to cut that pretty quick. That's a good move. I love the short standard risk box. He goes for the second position. When that fails right away, I'd like to see you out right here. But I don't mind the edge of the dragon. The only problem with that is that you've got two positions on, and then the give back on this one, which was hardly ever in the money, negates this one. And uh, that's, why, that's why I would rather be much stricter on a quick exit after a second position that doesn't work. I love the re-entry. This is what I'm talking about. You kept a little piece of that, or at least a scratch. Piece our flip that gets paid nicely. We might have hoped for more, but uh, you got out of that what you probably could. So 2.1R, um, that uh, looks pretty good. Um, I like the, the continued work on uh, rehearsing and refining your bar by bar back testing. Um, good simple plan for the day. Mindful of the upward move in the markets. Uh, scratched when it was supposed to work, but it didn't. And um, and I like this um, handling the monkey with your uh, um, with your fireman. That's good psychology and good simple risk management. Uh, here's Nolan. Um, I like the PSAR flip in the short here. I, you could have actually gotten short here, but that's reasonable because the VWAP collapse happens. A good quick exit. I like the v, when it crosses the VWAP and breaks the Bollinger Band mean and the PSAR flip. That's great. You got paid. Um, this one looks like a... Is that a short and a... Okay. That looks like a short and a quick scratch, a long and a quick scratch. Here's your Z3 pinch and that higher low. This is like a Kata 2 potential here, which would ride, you could ride the rails. Uh, this is the Kata 2 that you took, and that's what you want. And just like breathing, uh, crushing the upside, that's really nice work. A total 1.9. Yeah, these upward grinding moves, when they're above the PSAR and the whole day is up, boy, you love that. That's uh, that's the DAX. Nice work. Um, good uh, self-analysis in here. And to me, uh, disinterested is a underused word, and I don't disrespect it. It means just enough interest to do the right thing, but an emotionally um, low energy level that doesn't let you get jerked around. Less risk for more reward on less emotional energy. That's a three-bagger right there. Keeping the monkey mind occupied. Um, he, f he shifted away from the Aussie dollar to find the mover. That's a good decision. Um, this is one uh, I want to see you get out sooner, I think. Like, this is, a, you have a Kata 2. This is supposed to go. When it comes here and then makes a lower high and this rolls over, you can cut it here instead of here. It doesn't seem like much until you add it up over 100 trades. Uh, but then this move here is tradable. Uh, this piece, our flip, is tradable after the long time failure to fail. To the VWAP, it never got out of that channel, then broke out. When it breaks above the RL10, you can take that trade anywhere in this region that you want because you're you're at, you're above the Z3, you've cleared the previous resistance, and then you can take that as a Kata too. Like I would take this, try to exit here, and then re-enter here, and probably exit here again. Just keep firing. Uh, Agnieszka, 
working the Aussie. Let's see here. <clears throat> okay, so that should be green. That's a long right there. I like the breakout. Uh, I love the exit. I like the stop and reverse. I love the exit. I like the re-entry. I love the exit. The stop and reverse gets paid. Now, realistically, psychologically, if you're down 0.9 and 0.6, so you're down 1.5, at this point you were up plus 2, and we gave back 0.8. So instead, we 1.2 versus 1.5. So we're still underwater a little bit. I just find it psychologically helpful to come out of all that with a little bit in my pocket. So I might have been a little more rigorous inside here. Uh, I think this was slow. Uh, I think this re-entry was slow. I'd like to see you here. Uh, and then this could be a scratch. I love the discipline to stay out of the chop. I love the breakout above the dragon. Uh, I'd like to see you keep more of this at the edge of the dragon or at the southern skin instead of giving back uh, what looks like about 1.0. Um, I love the short and scratch. So we're at minus 0.4. I think with some improvements in here and in here, we might have uh, turned this slightly positive. So that looks, um, that's pretty good shape. Um, my brother, I think, sent, did you send me something here, Bill? Oh, there it is. Okay, I'm sorry. Yep. Going to make me do the work here. All right. All right, buddy. Okay, so here's some sniper work. Uh, we talked about this today in the um, in the VTI podcast, but this is the application of the uh, to our battle drill, not just as a profit preservation, but as an actual uh, technique to add mechanically to growing positions. And uh, this is pretty pretty slick. So here was the gap up, and we're working on Tesla here. This is the five minute. So not over optimized by any means. Um, he gets the the two the MMRB breakout. Here's his two R. So he adds a position. There's his two R. It breaks out. He adds a position and cuts it. Uh, it does not collapse. It breaks out above the dragon. He gets in, uh, exits for plus one, and just that's what 7.7 .7 looks like with the 2R battle drill in the most important stock in the market and the one that was the biggest capitalized company leading the way north. That's a vote uh, for more recovery in Tesla. I'm looking for that to pop tomorrow again. Uh, if we get any kind of follow through tomorrow, the upside. Tesla uh, should be the leader based on that pattern. Um, so uh, that's everything we got for... Oh, no, wait, did we, we didn't go over the reports. I'm sorry. That's not everything we have for today. Come on, Kenneth. All right, let's go to the um, dashboard one. We are in bearish volatile. 
that's the most important fact. Volatility is at a crucial level that could support sharp swings in either direction. So it's even more so. Um, the Min Pains, Merck, Johnson & Johnson, Diamonds, J.P. Morgan, that's the old reliables. The Max Pains are the ones that popped today, though. Tesla, Microsoft, Intel, Alcoa all did pretty well. The dojis are firing because it does not include the gap up, so the intraday range turned out to be quite a lot of dojis. Still some uh, favorable reward-to-risk ratios here in the auto framer. IBM, Coca-Cola, Microsoft is of very great interest because it was a percent winner today and is still 2.9 to 1 to the 10-day high, and then Tesla's 2.8. So those two should be on your list. Um, we had one big breakout to the upside in Merck. Uh, it had no other swing patterns, but just the fact that you see that tells you that it's it's pretty cool. Uh, Johnson and Johnson and J.P. Morgan both had breakouts to above their previous 10-day highs, so that's a good thing. Let's see. Let's shift to the uh, ETFs now. Uh, in the ETFs, the only big breakdown we had, all that red just draws my attention like a raccoon. Uh, that's going to be treasuries collapsing. That's a rotation out of treasuries into equities. And there's a ton of ETFs that are all firing better than 2 to 1 on the auto framer. Um, Mexico was the only one that broke out above its 10-day high. But otherwise, it was all U.S. here. The Russell, tech, S&P tech, metals and mining and staples. That gets a lot of its, or uh, discretionary, that gets a lot of its boost from Tesla. So the winners should continue to win tomorrow. Uh, a handful of auto framers. Uh, I like U.S. tech. S&P Tech, uh, Microsoft and Tesla to me are the no-brainers because they were huge winners today and they're very favorable on reward to risk. Um, Brazil is always tradable on the Cata 2, but I'm looking at Microsoft and Tesla hard. Looking at you boys. Um, the pinches, things that jump out at me. Tech was on a pinch. Love it. Diamonds and materials. Microsoft on a pinch. Um, Russell on a pinch. That's all good. Man, that is really good for tomorrow. Um, there was no indication of intraday sell-off, and it had a nice orderly follow-through after the big gap. That's a positive sign. Um, snipers. They, all of those uh, Godzillas moved really well. These are the ones that are still in Godzilla territory here. Um, Fox A and Fox. These are the volatile Godzillas. I would say KR is probably a volatile Godzilla too. This is pretty close to going green. And these are the little quiet ones just waiting to hatch and become amazing. And then in the tactical symbol set, only only treasuries because all of the other ones blew up to the upside. Uh, so king of the monsters, big follow through today, gave us the moral courage to uh, to be aggressive intraday. Hat tip to the king of the monsters. The one day movers, I like to sort that by the one day Z score of volatility. Uh, these are the ones that had um, moves greater than two standard deviations of range expansion. So um, I like to prioritize those. These were pretty good. These are the ones better than one. And BK is, is especially nice because it's double green, as is USB and these top three up in here. 
Uh, I like to look at the most volatiles in this market. Uh, the double greens are good. The green and red are interesting because today, was, in spite of a big range move, it was a extremely quiet. That's odd behavior. So, J.P. Morgan, are you consolidating gains, ready for the next leg up, or was that just a one-day profit preservation? I don't know. Uh, but tomorrow's going to be a trader's delight. Auto framer stats, the tactical symbol stats uh, uh, for the snipers. Um, this just gets my attention right away. Finance is strong on the five-day volatility. Quiet today. And the S&P, large range move today. That's the most important fact on that chart is the S&P had range expansion and followed through today. And you, you can now see who has moved into the summer. These are the leaders of relative strength. And energy still looking pretty good. And the 10-day NDX, more of the same. And uh, this is... Uh, this is tentatively positive right here. The fact that it it resisted further sell-off to preserve some of those gains from last week. It couldn't make a new high, but we do like the potential uh, to get to 380. If it can get above 380, then that thing is off to the races. And then this would be seen as a double bottom of, of slope. And so when you get those turning points, you must respect them and play for the potential upside. The last time, that was a move up from 360 to 430, and we're early stages of this move to the upside. So let's be mindful that this is a critical potential turning point. All right, that's enough to get us ready for tomorrow. Um, uh, take good care, and we shall see you in the, in the room tomorrow.